As we approach the final third of what has already been an exceptional year for the sport of boxing, fight audiences will see the return of its biggest superstar when he defends his undisputed super middleweight championship. Giving fight fans what they want, and that's the best fighting the best in mega fights. And in a classic case of mistaken identity, the Mexican legend has surprisingly accepted the challenge of Jamel Charlo, the undisputed champion down at light middleweight. I don't know what he's thinking, to be honest, and I don't care. I just care about how I'm going to train and I'm going to prepare myself for the best Charlo. A shock twist, marking the first time in the four belt era for two current undisputed kings to square off in the ring. In Charlo's last outing, he secured a dramatic 10th round knockout to sweep all four of the major sanctioning titles in his respective weight class. You know, he knows he, what he got on his hands, and I'm, I'm going to hold it down for us. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to make sure that I represent as well, and this is it. And in an audacious attempt to repeat the same feat in another division, he'll be jumping up 14 pounds to challenge Saul Canelo Alvarez for his quadruple crown. The highly accomplished Mexican knows all too well what's at stake. Exactly 10 years on from once attempting to topple boxing royalty himself, Canelo has since won world titles in three additional weight classes to establish a glowing legacy of his own. When you use certain names in boxing, oh yeah, they're household names way beyond boxing. Saul Canelo Alvarez is one of those names. The unpredictable nature of boxing, however, heightens the thrill of the ride, whereby even its greatest of champions have fallen victim to alternative matchmaking that prompts its challengers to spring the greatest of upsets. No doubt this is the plot the American will be hatching come September 30th, in what will be the biggest opportunity his career could ever hope for. Two superbly talented individuals that occupy space in the mythical pound-for-pound -pound lists, out to prove a point for different purposes. Welcome to the Canelo Alvarez versus Jamel Charlo Fight Countdown. In the four years between 2018 and 2022, Saul Canelo Alvarez was the consensus pound-for-pound -pound number one fighter in the entire sport. And by a considerable margin, was also the world's biggest box office draw, thus inviting no shortages of challengers vowing to take his throne. His reign first began with the decisive victory over his long-term rival, Gennady Golovkin, setting him on a path of remarkable performances to become a four-weight world champion. He broke through the ceiling with a brief stint as a light heavyweight when he knocked out the aging Sergei Kovalev for the WBO light heavyweight title. But having identified the super middleweight division as his new conquering ground, he immediately dropped in weight to target Callum Smith for the unified WBA and WBC championship. The momentum here was then carried straight through the brash Billy Joe Saunders, making him surrender the WBO strap after eight punishing rounds. And in November of 2021, came the crowning moment, when the final trinket, the IBF world title, was captured against Caleb Plant. In less than 12 months, the Mexican had wiped out every notable title holder to become the super middleweight division's first and only undisputed champion. A tremendous night, but when he had the opening, he took it quite ruthlessly, quite brilliantly. We said it. But despite being the face of the entire boxing landscape and earning rave reviews from fans and media alike, the temptations to push the boundaries further were too strong to resist. 
and in doing so, he experienced the grim reminder that even with his phenomenal abilities in the ring, some feats are impossible to reach. In selecting the WBA light heavyweight champion in Dimitri Bivol, Canelo Alvarez was planning a new campaign to become undisputed in two weight divisions. But the Russian's impeccable boxing ability and fluid combination punching showed that size wasn't the only obstacle the Mexican would need to overcome. Unlike the super middleweights that were washed away with relative ease, Bivol's ring IQ and unshakable confidence would deal Canelo his first official loss in almost 10 years. It was a harsh blow to his lofty expectations, and boxing observers with a fair, objective viewpoint understood the defeat was not reflective of his qualities as a fighter. But the hypercritical nature of the industry began carving an ulterior narrative, and the once widely revered pound-for-pound pound number one had finally given ammunition to a small but vocal army of cynics that had long been awaiting his fall from grace. I don't know, that's y'all. Uh, uh, this Canelo, Canelo, Canelo. Oh man, the kid was the cakewalk, the kid easy. For much of Canelo's reign existed the unfounded claim of him avoiding certain stylistic matchups from a certain promotional stable. Is he going to retire? Is he going to vacate the undisputed? Or is he going to come back down, fight someone that he should have fought prior to? Led by the influential Al Heyman, Premier Boxing Champions hosted a vast array of middleweight talent, ranging from 154 to 168 pounds. And despite Canelo having already dispatched one of them in Caleb Plant, there remained other challengers who many felt would put a halt to his run of dominance. And with his sudden defeat at the hands of Dmitry Bivol, as well as his recent run-of-the-mill points performances against Gennady Golovkin and John Ryder, it stirred the belief that the Mexican's peak powers may be slowly dwindling. From a fighter's perspective, I did see him slow down. I think his feet were a little slow. And given the fact that it was an 18 by 18 ring, which gives Canelo the advantage and he couldn't stop him, I mean, it goes to show you that there's a sign there of slowing down. If ever an opportune moment existed, PBC's army of challengers could well be entering the fray at the perfect time. And on the 22nd of June, it was officially announced that Canelo would cross the promotional divide and sign a three-fight deal with PBC, with the first fight of the new venture taking place on September 30th. Leading the pack of potential opponents was the six-foot-two whirlwind puncher David Benavidez, widely considered to be the biggest threat to Canelo's 168-pound reign. And alongside him was the WBC middleweight champion, Jamal Charlo, who'd long been campaigning for a shot at the Mexican ever since he vacated his middleweight crown. But much to the surprise of the boxing world, it would be Jamal's twin brother, Jamel Charlo, to jump the queue and be named Canelo's official opponent for this September. Champion of the world, introducing Jamel, Iron Man Charlo. He shares almost the exact same height and frame as his world champion sibling except that he is one minute younger and fights six pounds lighter at junior middleweight, where he holds the undisputed championship of the world and is widely recognized as one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the sport. Hailing from Houston, Texas, the fighting duo were initially taken to the gym by their father, a former professional boxer himself, looking to provide a positive, disciplined environment for his sons. There they met the highly regarded boxing coach Ronnie Shields, renowned for working with the likes of Evander Holyfield and Pennell Whitaker. 
Both would be raised into technically gifted fighters with an extremely combative nature. And just two years into Jamel's amateur career, the young hopeful secured a bronze at the Junior Olympics before finishing with a respectable record of 56 wins in 64 fights. Then after this, we out and headed back to the boxing gym to do some more boxing because that's where we do our studying and our working and our technique and our physicality. In December 2007, at the fledgling age of 17, he embarked on a professional career which saw a steady rise through the paid ranks. His most eye-catching performance would eventually come against Chris Catman, who prior to facing Charlo, had only experienced one professional defeat in the form of a points decision against Demetrius Andrade. A punch-perfect knockout here was then followed by more impressive stoppage victories, as well as a necessary learning fight against the veteran Demetrius Hopkins. And still undefeated, Jamel Charlo. By now, Charlo was becoming a well-rounded, competent light middleweight contender that was ready to level up his competition and in January of 2014, stepped through the ropes to face a former world title challenger in Gabriel Rosado. Challenger introducing King, Gabriel Rosado. The Philadelphia native was brought in to be the toughest test of Charlo's career. Nice combination there, connects on the face of Rosado by Charlo, again going upstairs with that lead left hand. But over the course of 10 one-sided rounds, failed to trap the quicker, slicker opponent that was content with hammering home hard, accurate shots on the counter. And still undefeated, Iron Man Charlo! Twelve months on from this impressive victory came the call to fight another world title challenger in Vane's Martirosian. Chief man in that corner along with us. Here we go, round one. The battle involving two top five ranked light middleweights would propel the victor up the ranks to challenge for one of the sanctioning body titles. And true to what was at stake, the Armenian provided Charlo with the toughest fight of his career, as the closely contested bout finished with a unanimous decision in favor of the Texan. And still undefeated, Jamal! Iron Man Charlo! Despite it being a grueling, frustrating affair, it provided an indispensable learning experience to prepare Charlo for the world title he was desperately yearning. You don't show me something, I'm going to stop this fight. Taking care of his fighter, this might be the time. This and after quickly dispatching Jochum Alcine seven months later in six impressive rounds, came a shot for the vacant WBC light middleweight championship against the 22 and 2 power puncher. John Jackson. Introducing John Darock Jackson. Much to the surprise of Charlo and the 3,000 fans in attendance, Jackson neglected the aggressive, brawling strategy that was expected of him and instead opted to box and move, causing confusion in the opposite corner and developing a wide lead on all three judges' scorecards. Charlo. But heading into the eighth round and recognizing the urgency to adapt, the undefeated Texan pressed the action to draw an exchange and land a precise right hand over Jackson's jab. A nice right hand that caught. Oh, and it's done, John Jackson! And Jackson is up, and this one is over! Oh my goodness! He set him into. Despite trailing on the cards, Jamel Charlo displayed the versatility and perseverance required to secure his first world's title. And the new WBC super welterweight champion of the world, Jamel Iron Man Charlo. Alongside his brother Jamal, who by now was also a world champion, holding the IBF trinket, Jamel had announced himself as one of the hottest young talents in the sport and in an effort to carry his fine form forward, promised an equally devastating performance in his first title defense. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Welterweight Championship of the World. By now, the new champion was developing a shrewd ability to maximize his punching power through well-timed, precise shots. And Hadley has remained orthodox as again he takes the ladder. 
and in the sixth round would punctuate his impressive display with another blistering right hand. Sitting undefeated at 29 fights, Jamel was displaying a knockout tendency that was not previously noted as part of his arsenal. And then he shoots it right from his chin. Very important here, because that makes the shot. First of all, it allows you to put more weight on it. Well, second of all, it allows you to make the shot shorter. It was an ability that boxing observers would come to respect even more in the champion's next title defense, when he came up against an extremely talented fighter in his own right, Erickson Lubin. The undefeated 18-0 Southpaw was a touted future world champion. And despite concerns of this title challenge coming too soon for him, his potential suggested him to be the toughest test yet for Jamel Charlo. The fight headlined at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York on October of 2017. The, bell and round one, the, the first round began with ample caution with Charlo gauging the southpaw speed and timing, and the 21-year-old challenger seeking to ease himself into his first championship fight. But late into the opening session, whilst at centre ring, the more experienced Charlo initiated a double jab to make Lubin duck into a pulverising right hand. The double impact of falling into the champion's scooping power punch sent Lubin crashing to the canvas and unable to recover the senses in his legs to beat the count. A dramatic first round knockout and a merciless reminder of a sport where the career of a promising athlete can be ravaged in just a millisecond. The young Lubin would face a hard road back whilst the elated Charlo was fast becoming one of the brightest stars in boxing. Charlo. To further elevate his career and capitalize on his growing popularity, plans were in motion to match Charlo with another undefeated champion, Jarrett Hurd, who at the time had just become the unified IBF and WBA light middleweight title holder. Um, you can make that happen. What would you like to do next? They got a guy named Jerry Heard that took my brother's title. We can unify. Then my fight, his fight after Lubin, he was calling me out then. Give me her! I will hurt her! The two hotshots were steadily developing a heated rivalry, and being under the powerful PBC promotional banner, were one day destined for a high-profiled three-belt unification fight. But in the meantime, for his third defense, Charlo took on Austin Trout, a former world champion and a former opponent of Jarrett Hurd. The intentions, no doubt, were to draw a direct comparison and gain a more favorable position at the negotiation table. Despite a points decision win here and the WBC champion's insistence on securing the much sought after unification fight, the promoters remain steadfast in allowing the rivalry to build. As such, the decision was made to seek out another former Jarrett Heard opponent in Tony Harrison, an intelligent, slick boxer puncher with a respectable reputation amongst the acute boxing observers. And having already tried his luck at a world title four fights prior, he was heading into the Jamel Charlo fight with the experience required to beat the odds heavily stacked against him. From the champion's perspective, Harrison was an opponent that would further strengthen his case as the best light middleweight in the world. But with one eye on the prize ahead, it instead proved to be a miscalculated step. Oh, good right hand. Got hurt there. Although Charlo scored with what appeared to be the harder, more meaningful shots, Harrison kept his composure to respond with accurate jabs, counter-punching and effective movement. And having stolen enough of the early rounds, he weathered the champion's late storm to cause one of the biggest upsets of the year. It was a hotly disputed decision that had both the fans and the media split down the middle. 
The aggression and heavier punching from Charlo would not be enough to prevent the WBC light middleweight championship switching hands. He told me walking up just right now, whatever happened, he know what it is. He know I won this fight. You know I won this fight. He told me. The Texans' fury over the results had to be subdued until the June 23rd date in the following year for the rematch to take place. One thing that y'all know I do well is destroy those that think they can run their mouth like Mr. Tony doing. But Charlo's impatience would be flamed even further when Harrison, three weeks before the fight, was forced to withdraw due to an ankle injury. Then up on the jab, a shot to the body by Jamal Charlo. Charlo down goes Cota! The event still went ahead, and his late replacement Jorge Cota was swept away in three one-sided rounds. To go for the finish. Oh, down goes Cota! And this one is over! Charlo's fury, it would seem, was burning hot as ever. I'm a man of my word and I do what I do. He knows what I'm about to tell him right now. It's Mr. Keep running your mouth. That's what I do. I'm telling you, I know something about you, boy, because you got a different animal in front of you. The man you fought December 21st is not the same Jamel Charlo. How's the rematch going to be different? He's a weird, yeah, come on. How the rematch going to be different? I'm going to knock his ass out. The budding feud would finally come to its breaking point exactly one year on from their initial encounter. And in an effort to stamp his authority early in the fight, Charlo dropped Harrison with a left hook in the closing moments of the second round. Unlike the first bout, where Harrison could find the range and space to apply his sharper boxing skills, Charlo closed the distance with blistering combinations to keep the champion contained at short range. The fight still remained extremely competitive throughout, making Charlo fully aware of the needs to take the decision out of the judges' hands. And despite being up on two of the three scorecards, he stunned Harrison with another sharp left hook to send him to the canvas for the second time. This time, there was no debate. His first and only ever defeat in the professional ring was avenged. And in a sequel that was much more fan-friendly than the original, Jamel Charlo recaptured his prized WBC light middleweight title in impressive fashion. Jack Reese is looking close. Jack Reese has ended it. Jamel Charlo is the champion of the world again. And now the two-time WBC super welterweight champion of the world. During the period in which Charlo was settling his score with Harrison, the remainder of the light middleweight division underwent multiple changing of the guards. The once targeted Jarrett Hurd had by now lost his unified titles and had already suffered two unexpected losses. In the new unified super welterweight champion of the world. The IBF and WBA trinkets he once possessed had found their way to the 23 and 1 Dominican. Jason Rosario. Jason Banana Rosario. And in the summer of 2020, it was announced that he and Jamel Charlo would square off in a three belts unification to bring the division one step closer to an undisputed champion. Iron Man Charlo. The event took place in Connecticut, where the younger Charlo would also share the stage with his twin sibling. Jamal Charlo, who successfully defended his WBC middleweight title in a career best win over Sergei Derevyanchenko. And continuing the family's fine run of form, Jamal closed the night with an emphatic eighth round knockout to become the IBF, WBA, and WBC light middleweight champion of the world. All, the belts. All that remained now was the WBO belt to complete the mission of becoming the division's first ever undisputed champion in the four belt era. <laughs> He's not letting up. Good uppercut. That was a vicious body shot. Oh, and that's a tan really caught to share a clean as he backed up against the ropes. The man standing in the way of Charlo was Argentina's Brian Castaño who just four months later powered through Patrick Teixeira to gain possession of the final belt. 
And much like the undisputed fights taking place in other weight classes at the time, this upcoming clash was involving the clear number one and number two fighters of the division. For the historic undisputed 154 pound championship of the world. The two titleists eventually met in July of 2021 in San Antonio to create a compelling encounter that lived up to all expectations. Being the more rugged, direct fighter, the Argentinian applied a calculated game plan of pressuring the favorite with high volume punching and close quarter exchanges. And the Texan, in return, attempted to keep the aggressor at bay with jabs and counter punching. But being the high octane firefight it was, the momentum seemed to be shifting in Castaño's favor, as he would successfully pin Charlo to the ropes. Sensing the needs to turn the tide, the American in the 10th round would find a home for a left hook that sent the Argentinian on the retreat for the first time in the fight. Right hand clips the jaw. Now Charlo sitting down and marching forward. It was a much needed spell of attack, which followed Charlo sweeping all three of the final rounds on the judges' scorecards. Yeah, you saw that. He missed. Oh, another right hand lands for Charlo, another one. A classic boxer versus brawler duel, and one that was met with a rapture of applause from its ecstatic audience. But their relation would be extinguished only moments later, when the official verdict was read out. The decision is a split decision draw. A bitterly disappointing draw. And the dejection of neither man being crowned the ultimate champion was on visible display. Jeers ran round the arena as each titleist attempted to make a case as to why he should have won. If anything, I, I won this fight. Uh, I hurt him way more than, you know, he did. And uh, Brian Castano's a tough warrior. Felix de Jesus. Whatever the debate, the one thing both camps could agree on was the overwhelming need to stage a rematch. And I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna dominate and I'm gonna dog him out. And I'm gonna hit harder than I ever hit before. I'm gonna be much faster than I ever was. I'm gonna be sharper. And 10 months on, the two champions stepped through the ropes to continue their 2021 Fight of the Year candidate by having another back and forth war through the first half of the fight. Well, when you fight Brad Castaño, you gotta be ready to fight three minutes, don't you? Great exchange. Oh, good right hand by Brad Castaño. Fantastic! With neither man taking a back seat in an evenly matched war, it begged the question of who in the second half of the fight would make the necessary adjustments. Over 7,000 fans here as Charlo just jolted Castaño with a right uppercut, and there's a combination backing Castaño up. The swelling under the right eye of Castaño suggested the war of attrition was weighing harder on him. Charlo soon began growing in confidence sitting down on his power shots to thwart his opponent's activity as they entered the championship rounds. And in a bid to avoid another hotly disputed decision, a well-placed left hook initiated the Argentinian's downfall. Another rematch, and another statement finish. Unlike the first fight, Charlo closes the show in the rematch. The tenth round TKO victory here was further proof of Jamel Charlo's knack of settling a debate with fight-ending power. And by having the capacity to adjust and improve in return bouts, the new undisputed light middleweight champion was adding new wrinkles to his game that would be required against the bigger, more elite opponents he was yearning for. I, I, I ain't done, dog. I might move up to 60 and see if I can do it again. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Congratulations. Terrific yeah. fight. It was an honor to cover this. Thank you. <laughs> Whilst the importance of pursuing a world title can never be undermined, 
there now exists the inescapable truth that a world championship is no longer the holy grail of boxing. The explosion of multiple alphabet belts has devalued the concept to such an extent that winning one is not necessarily the financial jackpot it used to be. Instead, it acts as a mere stepping stone towards the sport's real prize. Regardless of his brief setback in 2022, it is still an undeniable fact that Canelo Alvarez is by far the biggest attraction in boxing. And a pay-per-view date with him remains an irresistible goal in which challengers far and beyond are willing to cross their comfort zones for a life-changing opportunity. When you want to win something this big, you got to risk it all. And this is a part of that moment. Currently, Jamel Charlo stands as the latest candidate trying his luck. He has never been in a ring that and got hurt or got hit, you know, frustrated and to a point where I'm going to do some unpredictable shit. Accomplishing undisputed in his own weight class is a rare feat in itself. But even he recognizes the existence of a higher purpose. One more hurdle that, if overcome, would hoist his name to superstar levels. Such a triumph, however, will not come easy. By the time the September 30th date arrives, Charlo will have been out of action for over 16 months. A sharp contrast to the Mexican, whose last outing will have been just five months ago. This long stretch of inactivity is coupled with the fact that to challenge Canelo for his undisputed super middleweight crown, Charlo will also need to jump up two weight classes to enter into territory never before explored. And with a huge imbalance of experience at the highest level, it's a mountainous task in which very few experts are giving the Texan a shot. When you know yourself and you know what you possess in a ring and you know your skills, you never can bite off more than you can chew. I mean. However, the potential shockwaves felt by the entire sport should such a colossal upset occur will make the September showdown an intriguing watch. Having once operated in the same weight class together, the size disparity will in fact be almost non-existent. And the speculative notion of the Mexican currently removed from his absolute best will infuse Charlo with the courage required to fight the odds. I'm going to get in there and I'm going to train my ass off. I'm going to fight my ass off and I'm going to be intelligent. I know I'm moving up two weight divisions. Who cares? Who give a damn? For Saul Canelo Alvarez, however, the recent spike of naysayers provides enough of an incentive to return to the devastating form which set the boxing world alight. Having dominated for such a long period and crossing milestones never before expected of him, one wonders what is even left for him to achieve in his profession. But being a victim of his own brilliance and sparking a new generation of challengers, audiences will now see Canelo embark on his latest chapter. A lucrative three-fight deal with Al Heyman's PBC has given the Mexican access to a wealth of talent that could navigate him back to the upper echelons of pound for pound. And in Jamel Charlo, the Mexican faces his first hurdle, one which embodies the uncurbed spirit his critics have long been asking for. It may not be the exact fight fans have been expecting, but boxing is never meant to follow a script. Some of its greatest nights have involved showdowns that were never originally planned. And on September 30th, the date in which the first ever undisputed versus undisputed fight in the four belt era takes place, its two combatants will look to make history in more ways than one.